the body of L.C. Elaine Branch. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Why are you cast down, O oh my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those who trust in him. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Again, a blessed morning to all. This morning we have come to pay our final respects to Elsie Elaine Branch. And even more importantly, in whatever small way that we can, to give comfort to the family, to the friends and the loved ones who mourn her passing this morning. But we want to thank God, even as we mourn, for the long life that he lent to those of you this morning, a life way past the three score years and ten that we are allotted. And as we go through this service, our prayer is that something that is said in the hymns that are sung, in the word of God that will come later, something will encourage your hearts and will help to strengthen you as you go through this time of mourning. To her children, Winston, Ralph, Yolanda, and Jacqueline, her grands, great-grands, great-great-grands, every member and friend who has known and has been associated with LC for these many years, we offer our deepest condolences this morning on behalf of the pastors, the presbytery, and the members of Abundant Life Assembly. We extend our deepest sympathy to you, and we promise that you will be in our prayers and our thoughts as you go through this time of mourning. Shall we bow our heads in a word of prayer? Our Father and God, we come to you this morning, God, with heavy hearts. But in the midst of our mourning, in the midst of our grief, God, we give you thanks for a long life, Lord. A life that you lent to us, but in your wisdom you have seen it fit to take her back to be with you. We thank you, God, for the many lives that she would have impacted over this 100 years that she was on this earth. God, the lives that she would have taught certain things to, her family members or children, God, that she would have instilled values into their lives. Those, oh God, that would have been associated with her in one way or another over these many years. We give you thanks this morning, God, that we can come to you in our time of sorrow, in our time of grief, and know that you are 
the God of sorrows, but you are also the God of comfort. We can come with that assurance, O oh God, that you will not leave, nor you will not forsake us. For you have promised that you will be with us even to the end of the age. And so as they mourn their loss this morning, we ask, God, that you will comfort them, that you will encourage them in you, that you will give them the strength as they go through the days and the weeks and the months and even the years ahead where they will remember their loved one with fondness, where they will remember the good times and the not-so-good times. We ask, God, that in those times that they will look to you and they will find the comfort that they need. They will find the peace that only you can give. Lord, your word assures us that you do not give peace like the world gives peace. But, God, your peace is a lasting peace, an everlasting peace, a peace, O oh God, that passes all understanding. And so we commit them into your hands this morning and we ask, God, that you will be their strength and their shield. You will continue to guide and direct and protect them as they go through this time. God, we commit the service into your hands. Whatever is said and done here may it be done to bring honor and glory and praise to your name. And so, God, we give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise this morning. We thank you for all that you are and all that you will be. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Please remain standing for the singing of the first hymn, Thy way, not mine, O Lord. Thy way, not mine, O Lord. Amen. Dark it be, lead me by thine own hand. Choose of the path for me. So let it be a rough. It will be still the best. Winding or straight it leads. Right on. standing for the first scripture reading. It's taken from John chapter 14, verses 1 to 6, and is read by Reba Nichols. <coughs> Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, 
And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may also be. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Here ends the reading. At this time, we will say together Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted away. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. Come, Come, behold the works of the Lord, what desolation he hath made on the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the ends of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder, and burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen, and I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. You may be seated. At this time, we'll have a number of tributes. We'll have a musical tribute by Zane Corman and another musical tribute by Deborah Simmons.
Blessed good morning to everyone. I express my condolences to the family. I'm part of this family too. But my prayers are with you all and I know that God will give you the strength to go through this time in your life. Jackie would have asked me to sing this song. This is her tribute. And the song is Beneath My Wings. And I will try and do it to the best of my ability for you, Jackie. Start again from the top. the wind beneath 
Thank you, Sister Deborah. <clears throat> At this time, we're going to have a tribute by Winston Vanterpool, followed by a poem by Maria, Mario Vanterpool, and then the eulogy by Terry Vanterpool Fox. Good morning, church. I will try my best on this sad occasion to, to say what I have to say because I know that if I don't do this, mother will not forgive me. Elsie Elaine Branch was a caring, helpful, loving, family oriented person, always willing to help others in need. She was a daughter, she was a wife, she was a mother, and a grandmother, a great-grandmother, and a great-great-grandmother. But most of all, she was a friend, a friend who was willing to help others in need. Here are some examples to assess the person that she was. My father brought a vacuum cleaner from home for her to clean the carpet. What mother did? She gave it to all the neighbors to clean their carpet. And I was so annoyed. I said to mother, what are you doing? And she said, son, everything will be okay. As much to say, shut your mouth up and don't say anything. Another occasion, there was a lady in the uh, neighborhood who was very ill. Mother Karen was always there. And she would go into this lady's house every day and make sure that she was comfortable and that she had everything she needed. And the lady would say to me, your mother, she is a lovely lady. God will bless her. And mother continued doing this for her, going in every day until the last. She went in and she found her dead. But God did bless mother. She lived to be a hundred years, five months, and she had a very full life. And this was mother. She was not only kind to others, she was kind to her family. She was a mother, she was a father to all of us. And the reason why I'm saying this is because my father would be away most of the year. He would only spend four days in Barbados. The other 361 days, mother would be there. She'd be there making sure that we had somewhere to sleep, that we had foods in our stomach, 
that we had clothes to wear and that we go to school every day and was educated. Mother loved to play the organ. I don't know if any of you know that, but she loved to play the organ and she could play the organ. She also loved to dance. And I was told on the 100th birthday, she danced the night away. She also loved to spend money, but not on herself, on other people. In 2005, she lost her grand, but she would never let us see her crying because she didn't want us to see that her weakness. I am sure that if she was alive today, she'd be saying to me, son, don't cry. It is God's way. What will be, will be. That was her famous saying. What will be, will be. Love comes with grieving. And when you love anyone and you lost them, you will grieve. And mother, we are grieving today. We are missing you because we love you so. And what comes to mind now, after a reflection, is a Barbadian saying, which when I was young, I paid no attention to it because I thought life will go on. But when you mature and you think of your own immortality, you reflect and you think about it. And this Barbadian saying was, you never miss the water till the well ran dry like your mother when she closes her eyes. Mother, the well has went dry. You have closed your eyes and we are truly unhappy. There are tears in our hearts. There's a void that cannot be filled. The link is broken and will never be mended until that day when you come again. And in the words of the famous Dame Vera Lynn, we will meet again. Don't know when, don't know where, but I know we'll meet again some sunny day. And I'm hoping for that sunny day to come when I will be able to see my mother and tell her how much I miss her and how much I love her. But God said, he shall wipe away all tears in the coming of his kingdom when there shall be no night there. And I am looking forward to that day when there shall be no night there. Mother, I'm not going to say goodbye. I'm going to say a farewell because I hope that we will meet again and I will be able to tell you how much I miss and love you. Sleep in the wonderful arms of Jesus until we meet again. Rest in peace, dear mother. is entitled A Ray of Sunshine. A ray of sunshine in the world that's sometimes gray. The magic of your company will brighten up the day. You guided us through bad and good times, wiped our tears away. You brought us much joy as we traveled through the years. It warms our hearts to know you chose us as your family and friends a loyal, loving person on whom we all depend. 
we can have only one, if we can have only one wish, we'll make it just for you. Asking God for the blessings in everything you do. Even, even though we may not say it, we appreciate all you've done. Richly blessed is how we feel having a grandma like you. Here ends the poem. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 to 8 states, For everything there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to weep, and I paraphrase here, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. Good morning. For all of you here who do not know me, I'm Terry Vanderbilt Fox a granddaughter of Elsie Lane Branch. On behalf of my family, I want to thank all of you for being here today as we celebrate the life of Mama, as she's more affectionately known. It is good to see that so many people also loved and cared for her. Elsie Lane Branch was born on the 23rd of April in 1922 to Edna Callender Smith. Some may say that she was born into a life of privilege as she attended school, the Grassfield School, in Horse and Buggy. Grassfield School is now known as the St. Michael School. Her favorite subjects, as my uncle stated, is music. And she also played the violin. Some may also said that she gave up that life of privilege when as a young woman, she met and fell in love with Benjamin Babsy Branch, a young seaman. That union gave birth to five children. Weeda Vantepool, now deceased. Winston Vantepool, my uncle. Ralph Vantepool, my father. Yolanda Vantepool, my aunt. And Jackie Barrow, my aunt. She was also the stepmother of Joyce Hudson. She became the grandmother of Christopher. We know him as Anthony, but Christopher Jr. Debbie Ann Van Tepoel Corbin, now deceased, and Basil Van Tepoel, deceased. Sabrina Van Tepoel Bullen, Adrian Van Tepoel, yours truly, my sister Rosalind Van Tepoel, Dwayne, Katrina, Keisha, and Brett Branch. She was also the great-grandmother of Christopher Edwards, Mario and Itania Vanderpool, Rico Lewis, Tamisha Iser, Reba Nichols, Zane Corbin, Katrina, Kieran, and Kyle Vanderpool Bullen in the UK, James and Daniel Von, Van, um, Fox, and the great-great-grandmother of five. She was also the mother-in-law of Leela Vantable, Lorna Vantable, and Roll Barrow. Mama was also a friend and mother to many within the Bank Hall community. In her own special way, she touched the lives of many. Proverbs 31 describes a virtuous woman as one who leads her home with integrity, discipline, and more. Mama displayed the attributes of a virtuous woman. Benjamin, her husband, was away for more than six months of each year as a seaman, but she managed their household in his absence. She was self-substanent. She raised ducks and chickens and pigeons in order to provide meals for her family and many others during the months he was away. 
As my uncle Winston stated, she was generous, compassionate, considerate, and supportive. She shared the bounty that brought Benjamin brought home from his overseas trips with other families within the neighborhood. She, she believed that it took a village to raise a child. She walked the talk. Her home was always a hive of activity, as it was among the first to be blessed with the main means of communication at that time, a red effusion box, a black and white TV, and a rotary telephone. She had an open door policy, especially to all the children within the neighborhood. Mama had time and a smile for all of her family members, extended family and friends. And I share now some of the sentiments of my family members. Reba remembers Mama always asking about her school activities. And Tamisha, her great granddaughter, remembers specifically how loving and sweet she was. Tamisha recalls especially that she enjoyed the opportunities she had to brush Mama's long hair. I guess for her, Mama was a life-size Barbie doll. But truth be told, most of us females in the family look forward to any opportunity to wash, brush, and style Mama's long hair. She also dabbled in the new technology. With Sanaya, she would experiment with Snapchat filters. Gail, Maria and Etania's mother remembers the twice daily visits she received from Mama during her difficult pregnancy with Etania. And Mario remembers her feelings of pride when he first introduced his daughter, Sanaya, as a baby to Mama. She had time for all her family and enough for friends. But there was another side of Elsie Elaine that must be noted. She, spared, she paid special attention to the obituaries, both in the newspapers and on the radio. She just needed to hear a familiar name or know a member of the family or know someone who knew the family and she was ready to attend the funeral to pay her respects and personally offer her condolences. Ma was disciplined. She was up every morning at 4 a.m. with the birds and in bed every night at 8 p.m. It was always early to bed and early to rise. Duane remembers the wake-up calls from her, which got him off the bed early. The only problem was they kept coming even when he was on holiday, and she refused to stop until he moved and got up. Every night after the weather update, on CBC News, Reba says Mama would announce, the roof is leaking and I'm going upstairs to bed. Yes, I must admit she had a sense of humor which could be questioned at times. We're still trying to figure that one out. She was fit, both mentally and physically. Her favorite pastimes were collecting crossword, completing crossword puzzles and playing solitaire. Every morning, she was one of the first persons to purchase the newspaper. She was up to date on all the local and international news. As time passed, she no longer made the trek for the newspapers, but she had her handy books of crossword puzzles. Very often, you would visit and see her with a pen or pencil in her ear or behind her ear, and you knew what she had been up to. She always kept her brain ticking. More recent, she was the first to advise Rico of the details of the passing of Queen Elizabeth II and that Prince Charles was next in line to become king. Poor Rico. He had to seek the assistance of Google to verify his 100-year-old great-grandmother's information. Mama was also physically fit. She walked everywhere from her bank hall to see Lance Bank Hall residents and volunteered to pay and make small purchases for her neighbors who were getting down in age. 
We all believe that she passed on that walking gene to her first grandson, Anthony Christopher Sr. He walks everywhere. Our cousin Rosemary remembers walking with her many mornings to take the younger children to school. Once the children were safely dropped off, the exploration through Bridgetown began. She taught Rosemary many of the nooks and crannies in Bridgetown on their outings. But more, Rosemary more fondly remembers the chats and advice that was given by Mama while on those journeys, which she says helped her personal development as a, wo a young woman. She also had another saying, if crab don't walk about, we never get fat. Mama was also very God-fearing. I have early childhood memories of my sister and my younger cousins and our two younger aunts going off to church twice on Sundays. Morning service at Christian Mission Church, evening service at the Methodist Church on Buckingham Hill. It was mandatory, non-negotiable. She strongly believed wherever God did was well done. As the month passed after her last birthday, she started to recall her many friends and neighbors who had passed and lamented the fact that she had to bury her husband, her daughter, and two of her grandchildren. On Friday the 22nd of April this year, we all gathered to celebrate her 100th birthday. May the 9th, nine days after her birthday, was the second anniversary of her daughter, Weda. With Weda's death, Weda was her firstborn and her constant companion at home during the day. Some of us believe that Mama was still grieving the loss of her firstborn. She did not want to have to bury any more members of her family. Mama suffered a stroke on Friday the 23rd of September, two days before Rita's birthday. We were all fortunate to have had the opportunity to visit and talk with her while she was in the hospital. She passed knowing that we all loved her. And I'd like to share this poem, God Looked Around His Garden by Melissa Sharif. And I think this sums it up of her final days. God looked around his garden and he found an empty place. He then looked down upon the earth and saw your tired face. He put his arms around you and lifted you to rest. God's garden must be beautiful. He always takes the best. He knew that you were suffering. He knew you were in pain. He knew that you were never, would never get well on earth again. He saw the road was getting rough and the hills were hard to climb. So he closed his weary eyelids and he said, peace be done. It broke our hearts to lose you, but you didn't go alone for parts of us went with you the day he called you home. As I come to the end of our eulogy, let us all remember Psalm 35. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. We can bid Mama farewell as Matthew 25, 23 states, well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. Now enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Thank you. We give God thanks this morning for his goodness, for his mercy stores us. We are so thankful when we can celebrate the lives of those who live long and productive lives. Shall we stand as we sing the closing hymn for this part of the service through all the changing scenes of life? Through all the changing scenes of life, in trouble and in joy, the praises of my God shall still 
Michael Horford comes to give the sermon. Good morning to all. Once again, on behalf of the pastors, my apologies. Once again, on behalf of the pastors and their families, the members and friends of the Abundant Life Assembly, we want to extend condolences and sympathy to the family and friends of our dearly departed, our dearly beloved, Elsie Elaine Branch. It is our prayer that you would sense and know God's comfort and peace during this time of bereavement. I also want to acknowledge the presence of the Speaker of the House and the Minister of Parliament, the Member of Parliament for St. Michael West Central, but Central, St. Michael Central, uh, the Honorable Arthur Holder. At this time, we want to read from Scripture, a familiar portion of Scripture, Psalm 23. And perhaps we can all read together or recite together. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Father, this is your word. I pray in the next few moments that those who are in the hearing would be ministered to to the glory of your name. So we give you all praise and we give you all thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. You may take your seats. Thank you, worship team. I just want to spend a few brief moments uh, encouraging you from the word of the Lord. And I think you have, this will be a continuation of such encouragement, even in the eulogy given by Mrs. Vanderpool Fox, uh, there were many words of comfort coming from the Holy Scriptures. And I just want to 
continue in that regard. When we look at this familiar passage, uh, Psalm 23, we see a reminder from the psalmist, David, who had gone through various types of trials and tribulations and temptations and tragedy, reminding himself and reminding those who would hear this psalm that the Lord is our shepherd. The Lord is our protector and our guide. That is really what a shepherd is. And perhaps in our recent times, we don't see shepherds as much as we used to in days gone by. My grandfather uh, was a shepherd. He raised sheep. And it was in the time where shepherds led sheep and not sheep going wherever they felt like and eating wherever they felt to eat. There was a certain level of leadership and ownership by the shepherd of his sheep. And what this word reminds us that is, it is that in times like these, where we sorrow, where we mourn, there is one we can look to, there is one who we can depend on, there is one who we can find our security and safety in, and that is the Lord. When the psalmist says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want he doesn't mean that he has no desires. He does not mean that there's nothing that he may need in the particular circumstance. He is saying that the Lord will provide it. During this time of sorrow, you need, you require comfort. And when I talk about comfort, I am not just talking about, and I, nor am I devaluing, the comfort that comes from friends, from family members, through wonderful words of encouragement, through cards, from even hugs and other signs of affection, that, that, that they care and they're concerned and they sympathize and they even empathize. But the truth is the grief that we feel when we lose someone we love is deeper than just the tears that flow on the inside. It's an inner emotion, an inner feeling, which comes from the void of the person not being with us anymore. We would perhaps think that someone like Sister Elsie, who was blessed by the Lord to live 100 years, and that is a blessing, I know in Barbados, I know in our circumstance, we are always hearing about centenarians. Barbados is still the second or the third uh, most uh, populated country in the world with centenarians, and that is something to give thanks for. So perhaps for us, it might seem like a normal thing for an individual to reach 100. But in the grand scheme of things, in the understanding of God's blessing, and that he, he gives to men three score and ten, it is something to be thankful for, to know that she reached a hundred years old. Yet still, we miss her. Yet still, we grieve. Yet still, we sorrow. Even at, in the point, in the moment of which I speak, we are still shedding tears and we will continue to shed tears because she meant something to us. The expression of grief, often persons will say, you know, be strong. And we often calculate or understand being strong meaning not to cry. But crying, weeping, is part of the human expression that God has given to us to show as a sign of celebration this individual, Elsie, meant something to us. So there may be some of you who are holding back tears. Don't hold them back. Let them flow. But know and be reminded that the God who is our shepherd is able to comfort you in your time of grief. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 3 to 4 says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, 
who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. You need his comfort. We all need his comfort in this moment. And the reality with grief, as it tells us in Ecclesiastes, that there's a time to rejoice and there is a time to mourn. And the reality of mourning is that it does not necessarily have a time limit. So in other words, well, we may move from this place of service and ceremony onto the place of burial, that is not when the grief ends. But what God does is that when grief comes, he is able at any time, in any situation, in any moment, to comfort us. We can call on him. He does not sleep. He is not deaf. He's not partial. He is able to give us that peace that passes all understanding that will guard our hearts and our minds. So as we look back at the passage and we see the, the, the psalmist saying, He restores my soul. He brings me or redeems me back to the place where he wants me to be in him. This is not just an issue of becoming happy again. This is an issue of having the joy of the Lord. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. As we reflect on this passage, as I come to a close and we transition, I want to leave with us this most important part, this most important aspect of the Lord who is our shepherd, as I said, our protector and our guide. Yes, he absolutely comforts us in times of grief. He understands the grief that we are going through. He gives us the ability to express this grief in tears and in words and in expressions. But what God wants for all of us, not only those who grieve right now, but what he wants for every human being is to be redeemed to him, to come into his righteousness through his son, Jesus Christ. When God thinks about our protection, when he thinks about guiding us, when he thinks about restoring us, he thinks further than our emotions, he sees our souls. He sees that we are finite beings who all have a limit. There will be a time, Hebrews 9.27 tells us, an appointed time when we all will pass from this earth, when we will all die and then the judgment. So what God wants for every human being is to be redeemed to him so that when we come to that final moment, whenever it might be, whether we reach 100, whether we meet, reach 78 years old, 50 years old, or even 20 years old, that we have that security that we will have eternity with him. So the Bible tells us in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. That is the greatest comfort that we can have in this world, that when we do pass, when our loved ones pass, if they have known God as their Savior, if they have come to faith in Jesus Christ, they will have eternal life and we shall see them again. So with every head bowed and with every eye closed, let's just take a short moment of reflection. Just a minute or so. Don't think about the person on your right or your left. Think about your own relationship with God. Ask yourself this morning, is he calling me? Is he calling me to redemption through his son, Jesus Christ? 
Do, that, do I have that eternal comfort and security that only comes from Him? And if that is you this morning, in this moment while you reflect, I'm just going to ask you to raise your hand so that we can pray with you. If you are saying today, I choose to place my faith in Christ alone for the forgiveness of my sin so I can have that eternal hope. Wherever you are, we just want to pray with you. If you just raise your hand. I see that hand in the back, ma'am. Is there anyone else? I see that hand, sir. Is there anyone else? I see that hand as well. Lord, you see every hand, but Lord, you see further than I will see or any human can see. You can see hearts. Surrender to you, placing their faith in Christ Jesus alone, who you sent to suffer for our sin so we could be forgiven and redeemed. Father, I pray in this moment for every person who has raised their hand, every person who has bowed to you in surrender, that you, O oh God, would do the work, the supernatural work of transformation as they confess their sin to you. Your, your word tells us you are faithful and just to forgive us of any, any and all unrighteousness. We are thankful that you throw our sin, the memory of our sin, into the sea of forgetfulness, O oh Lord. So, Father, we are thankful to you today for what is your work and your harvest alone. We thank you for every soul that has been redeemed. We thank you for every soul that has been converted. We thank you for every life that is being transformed. And we thank you, O oh God, for their growth in Christ Jesus to the honor and glory of your name. So we give you all praise and we give you all thanks in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. At this time, we will have, thank you for those who raise your hands. At this time, we'll have a prayer for the family. We'll ask the family, if you are able, if you can stand, and I will ask Elder Roderick to pray a prayer of comfort for the family during this time. If the family members could stand, please. Shall we pray? Oh, Father and God, we have heard your word this morning. Your word that encourages us, your word that assures us that you are our shepherd. You are not just a shepherd. You are the good shepherd. You are the one that we can depend on. You are the one who leads us through the valley of the shadow of death. God, we cannot go through without you. And so this morning... God, as these who are here, who are grieving, will stand. Those who might be watching online, wherever they are this morning, God, we ask that you will comfort them, that you will strengthen them. You will undergird them, O oh God. You are our strength. You are the one that we can depend on in our time of grief, in our time of trouble. Whatever we are going through, you are aware of. And you are able and more than able to attend to all that concerns us. And so we commit them into your hands and we ask God that in the days and the weeks and the months ahead that you will be their strength. God, may they look to you, O oh God, the only one who can give them true peace, who can give them true comfort. May they rest in you, O oh God. May they call upon you in those times, Lord, when their hearts become heavy with the grief, O oh God, of the loss of their loved one. When they remember, Lord, and when the enemy comes in like a flood to try to destroy them, O oh God, you have promised that you will set up your standard against him. And so this morning, God, we commit them to you. We ask that they go through the rest of this service. God, as they go to the graveyard to have the burial, which is the hardest part, O oh God, of this situation. We ask, God, that your peace would be with them even there. That you will continue to guide and direct them through the winding paths of life. God, may they look to you like Sister Elsie, oh God. May they commit their lives to you and know that one day they will see her again. And so, Father, we give them into your hands this morning. For in your hands they are in good hands. And we thank you, Lord, 
that we can look to you in our times of grief, in our times of sorrow. And whatever we go through, we know we have a God who is bigger than the problems that we face, a God who is more than able to do exceedingly abundantly and above all that we can ask or even imagine. And so we give you thanks and we give you praise this morning for what you have done and for what you will continue to do. In Jesus' precious name, amen. With the rest of the congregation, please stand as we sing the hymn, And Can It Be? And can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood? Died he for me who causes pain for me who him to death pursued. Amazing love, how can
you're meant to be. I feel it in my soul. Feel it in my soul. Never separated you and me. Broken made whole. Broken made whole. The world that tries to steal. we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to celebrate a life well lived. Father, we ask for your strength. We ask for your comfort. We ask you for your healing during this difficult time. Not only at this place of burial, but as time follows, oh God, as memories come, we ask, oh Lord, that you will be with us. In Jesus' name, amen. You may lay the flowers.
much as it has pleased Almighty God to take out of this world the soul of Elsie Elaine Branch, we therefore commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, looking for that blessed hope when the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words.
There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar, for the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there in the sweet. We shall sing on that beautiful shore the melodious songs of the blessed, and our spirit shall sorrow no more, not a sigh for the blessing of rest in the sweet, in the sweet by and by, by and by. We shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet, in the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. You are. We thank you for her legacy. We thank you for her impact. We continue to pray for the comfort of all those who remain. And we thank you, O oh Father, for what you will do in the midst of our sorrow to the glory of your name. So we give you all praise and we give you all thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. appreciate it and we feel it from the bottoms of our hearts so thank you all again for coming and for expressing how you feel about my dear mother thank you
Yeah. 